This podcast is on the lymphatic system, but before I discuss the lymphatic system, I just want to quickly review through with you the capillary tissue fluid exchange um, that we did already, have, already have discussed in class. So just to orient you to this diagram, here we have the arterial and here we have the venule. So in describing this piece of the capillary bed, we would describe this section here as the arterial end and this section as the venule end. So on the arterial end of the capillary bed, we would say here that blood pressure is greater than osmotic pressure. And so because of this pressure differential, this causes substances to diffuse um, out of the capillary bed into the ECF. I'll remind you that everything surrounding a capillary bed we call the ECF, which stands for extracellular fluid. So that is all surrounding the capillary bed. So the things that would diffuse into the ECF would be things that our body wants to keep. Things like water, um, oxygen, amino acids, and glucose. So those would be things that we would, um, that would diffuse into the ECF. So I'll remind you that when these substances diffuse into the ECF, there are cells that are surrounding. So if I was going to draw in some cells here, and I'll draw them in purple, there are cells that are surrounding this entire structure, um, but there is a space between the capillary bed, there's the nucleus, between the capillary beds and the um, cells that are surrounding these, these tissue, the, the tissues of the cells that are surrounded by these capillary beds. So within this, these things like some of the water, the oxygen, the amino acids, and the glucose are going to be taken up by these cells that are here. And so these cells will pick up all of those substances. And so midway through the capillary bed, if there could be a midway point, we would say that there is no net pressure at some point, which would mean that the blood pressure would be equal to the osmotic pressure. So there would be no exchange of nutrients at some midpoint, so to say, um, across this capillary bed. And so just as a reminder, larger things like these red blood cells that are here, um, platelets, the little yellow things, um, and other blood plasma proteins, they do not diffuse across the capillary bed, so they'll end up staying within the capillary and being transported around in the circulatory system. Since most of the water as we move through the arterial end of the capillary bed has left the capillary bed, therefore the blood becomes very concentrated. It becomes hyperosmotic. And so based on the rules of diffusion, it would dictate that on the venule end, we have a really low concentration of water and other substances on the venule end. And therefore, just by the um, rules of diffusion, your water is going to diffuse into the capillary bed. So on this end here, we will have, on the venual end, we will have our osmotic pressure now is greater than our blood pressure. And because of this, we will have things that will enter back in. So those things will be the things that our body cells want to get rid of. So the product of cellular respiration, carbon dioxide, um, as well as any other sort of wastes, and I'll just summarize them up as wastes, as well as water moves back in. Now please notice on the both ends of the capillary beds, you had water leaving and then you also have water entering back into the venual end of the capillary bed. Um, and this kind of makes sense because on the arterial end, we want to keep the oxygen, the amino acids, the glucose, the things that our body has worked so hard to digest and take in into our system. We, all, we want to get rid of these carbon dioxide wastes and maybe a little bit of water, but I'll come back to that, um, into the venule end, and then we want to take it back to the heart, and then the heart will pump it out to the lungs, and the carbon dioxide will then leave. So you might be asking yourself, if this vodcast is about lymphatic system, then why is Miss Pass reviewing the capillary tissue fluid exchange with us? So let me let enlighten you. So on the arterial end, we had water leaving. It enters into the ECF and is circulating around. On the venule end, we have water that re-enters. So about 85% of our water is picked back up on the venule end, as we know that this is a large contributor to our blood pressure and maintaining that blood pressure. So then you might be asking, well, what happens to that other 15%? And now intro to the lymphatic system. 
So I've drawn the lymphatic system here in all these green lines here. And the lymphatic system, these are actually lymph capillaries. They surround and run alongside of all of the blood capillaries within our body. And so their job is to pick up that extra 15% of water that has been released into the ECF, into the interstitial fluid as it's also known as. And once that water enters into the, that, the lymph capillaries, we now call this fluid lymph. So the fluid that runs through the lymphatic system is actually called lymph. So next we're going to review through um, the functions of the lymphatic system and then a few other structures that I would like you to be aware of. So lymphatic system is defined as a system of thin-walled vessels that drain fluids from the body's tissue spaces. Now these body tissue spaces, it's the space in between the um, capillary beds and the lymph capillaries. And so we call that space, as we know, ECF, standing for extracellular fluid. Now in this diagram, what common things are you seeing? So yes, there's a whole bunch of scientific names coming along with that, but if you look at the ending of these, you see a lot of nodes, node, node, and you also see ducts, duct. Um, is there another duct? No, there isn't. Oh yes, one more, and another duct there. So these ducts and nodes are part of the lymphatic system. I won't go into too much detail on ducts, but I will kind of describe the function of lymph nodes within your body. There are four functions of the lymphatic system to take note of in Biology 12. The first one we've already talked about, which is take up excess fluids, and this was from the ECF. Um, the second one to note is that transports fatty acids and glycerol, which remember are the monomers of lipids, via the lacteal. We've already discussed the structure of the lacteal when we talked about the digestive system. So that lacteal, if you remember, is in the villi. So this is going to be from the small intestine and it is going to deliver it um, to the subclavian vein, um, which is a vein that is up kind of right by your clavicle area, um, and that's where the lymphatic system meets back up with the circulatory system. The third function is to fight infection. Now, when we've talked about in the, in the past, you know that in order to fight infection, we usually rely on leukocytes, and specifically, we're going to be looking at the um, lymphocytes um, within the nodes. Additionally, to trap and remove any sort of cellular debris, and this is where those nodes are going to be, um, become important. So within the lymphatic system, we have a few structures to be aware of. Um, the first off are lymph veins and capillaries. Now here's a typical diagram that you will see um, of the lymphatic system and how it's associated with the capillaries within the circulatory system. So here's our arterial. If you can see here, here would be our capillary bed. Um, this is where we have the exchange of the oxygen and the nutrients with the carbon dioxide, and here would be the venule end. Here is the integrated lymphatic system, which weaves itself throughout the capillary beds. So if you'll note here, here are some of the similarities. We have lymphatic capillaries, just like we had in the circulatory system where you have your blood capillaries. We also will have in those capillaries, um, they will lead into lymph veins. And so the capillaries will drain the lymph into the lymph veins. Those lymph veins then also um, will drain into some deeper seated um, lymph ducts, but we're not going to talk about the ducts as much, but just know that we move from lymph capillaries to lymph veins into ducts. And just like the veins within our circulatory system, the lymph veins also contain valves. So here is a valve, and again, it's to the the purpose of a valve is always, always to prevent backflow. And so these lymph veins also contain valves. They also rely on muscle contractions and breathing just as our blood, our blood veins also do. Most of you have probably heard about a lymph node. A lymph node is what your mother or your doctor or your dad um, might decide that they're going to feel in your neck when you are sick to see if your nodes are swollen. And so they're usually checking out these nodes here. There are also nodes in your armpit as well as nodes in your groin that can swell and therefore can be seen and felt on the outside of your body. Um, but our lymphatic system, there are many, many nodes. Their job is to cleanse the lymph and how they do this this is by containing leukocytes. Now, if you remember, leukocytes are white blood cells. The role of a white blood cell is to um, kill any bacteria 
um, or viruses or parasites, so any harmful substances. And so there is a congregation of white blood cells within these lymph nodes that will do that for you, that will kill those harmful substances. So you might be asking yourself, well, why do the lymph nodes swell then? Well, when they are going through the killing of those harmful, and I spelt this incorrectly, substances, um, they basically call on other white blood cells to join them to make sure that we can attack that um, infection, that potential infection that is occurring. And so the congregation, the swelling is just a congregation of white blood cells. The third structure within the lymphatic system to be aware of um, are the lacteals. We've already discussed this in the digestive system. If you remember, this structure here, this was a villi. And within the villi were the blood vessels as well as the lacteal. So the lacteal is this red, and now I'm drawing over it in black, this red, um, sub, this red structure within the lacteal. And so its job is to transport those lipids. And when I say lipids, I don't mean the whole, the large structure of an actual lipid. As we know, it would be too large. And so our body has already broken it down through lipase into fatty acids and glycerol. And so that lacteal will pick up those substances um, from the small intestine and deliver it into the lymph. Four other lymphoid organs to be aware of are the tonsils, the appendix, the spleen, and the thymus. Now these tonsils here, these tonsils are quite swollen, so likely when you open your mouth and say, ah, in the mirror, you're not going to see these swollen tonsils. So our tonsils are kind of the first protecting entrance that will trap those foreign antigens that have come in with the food, which kind of makes sense. We'd have some sort of um, lymph, lymph organ within our mouth to trap those, that be the first line of defense in taking in food. Um, the second lymphoid organ I want to talk about is the appendix. Now we've already talked about this within the digestive system. Um, once thought to be a vestigial organ, which means that it was thought maybe over evolutionary times, it used to have a function and now it doesn't. But actually we now know that this is a place in which um, extra uh, bacteria, that good bacteria that exists in that large intestine, this is a home for that extra bacteria in case that bacteria needs to be replenished. The third um, uh, lymphoid organ is the spleen. Now, the role of the spleen is to filter blood. So it's the, one of the places that initiates an immune supply. Um, and because there is so much blood that, wrote, that um, is circulated through the spleen, it is one of those organs that if damaged, sometimes tends to be in athletes, that if hit hard enough and it is damaged, it is kind of goes unnoticed for a while and it can lead to internal bleeding, which if not caught in ahead of time, can lead to death. So a few roles of the spleen, they remove abnormal blood cells, they are a storage area for the iron that was found within the red blood cells and has been recycled, and it also stores platelets. The fourth lymphoid organ is the thymus. Now the, the thymus is located, if you could see in the back here, here is the heart. So it would come here and it sits just above the heart um, in between the right lung and the left lung. Now its job, it's a place where you, um, the T cells, specifically speaking, um, the leukocytes, um, they mature here. So the T cells get their name from thymus. Um, and now it gets smaller as the older that, older that you get. And so therefore, um, that's why sometimes as we get older, it's not, um, we're not as protected as much because those T cells are not being produced as much by that um, thymus gland. So please remember to go to the vodcast and complete your vodcast reflection assignment. Additionally, I've um, included two questions here that would be allow for further extension beyond the reflection questions.